happy Wednesday. Um, I just put up my bulletin board. Hope you just saw it. I think it's really cute. Um, that is the problem with my, I don't usually like doing seasonal bulletin boards. Um, and that's why I had my new year's resolution one up there. And I was like, that can last, you know, through February. That was the longest. But now that it was March, I was like, I need to switch this out quickly. So since we finished up our opinion writing, um, we just did a cats versus dogs. I read, oh, I thought it was here. I have a National Geographic cats versus dogs book. And then I also have a cats versus dog fiction book. I actually made a whole little unit for it. it looks like this over on TPT. Um, but we didn't do the whole thing. Instead, we just talked about which animal we prefer. And then we used that opinion anchor chart we've been using the whole time to make sure we have all the parts. So it was like our final uh, chance at doing all of it. Make the sentence starter, add the two reasons to support your opinion, and then close it up. And then I gave them a little um, Art for Kids Hub directed drawing to do in the illustration box. But I think it came out pretty cute. I thought I would pop in a few times this week and kind of just let you know some of the activities we're doing. Yesterday in math, I did a really fun activity for comparing sets. Um, we actually did our assessment yesterday, so we finished up numbers within 40. Um, and within those numbers, we had to identify tens and ones in those numbers. We had to compare and order those numbers, and we also had to do number patterns. Just me talking to my camera. Sorry, I was just talking to somebody real quick. Let me grab the math activity. I have it over here. I already have this. I made it um, quickly over the weekend, like for this particular activity um, that I wanted to do, just a little sheet. And then I um, put it in the math club, but I think I can make this a freebie as well. And just so you know, anybody who uh, was wondering about the math club, the literacy club, or the writing club, um, this past weekend, we decided to just open up all the clubs um, instead of waiting till summer to open it. So I will have the link down in the description in case you want to check that out. Many of you know that I make things for the clubs first and then I put them on TPT. So let me show you this game. Okay, so all I did was prep a bunch of brown paper bags with a bunch of counters inside. And then I just made, this is the little sheet that I will share with you. Um, and it says red, yellow, there are blank counters and how many more. So here we are comparing sets. So the way this works is partners would get a group or a bag of the counters. I had them shake it three times, one, two, three, and then they had to dump it, boom. And then one person would be in charge of getting the yellows in a spot and the other person would be in charge of getting the reds. And when they did this, I told them they had to group them by tens and ones. So let me quickly do that. Okay, just a quick little sort here. So the person who was doing the reds would count theirs up, 10, 20, 21, 22, and they would write 22 here. And then the yellows would do the same thing. So 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and write it here. Once they wrote down the two numbers, they would then have to compare them. Um, we can see that 26, we talked about our tens are the same, 20, and then 22 and 26. 26 is bigger, so we do our two dots here, one dot here, and connect them. 22 is less than 26. Now we had to figure out there are more blank counters. Are there more red or yellow? So they would write yellow trying to do this with one hand and then how many more and when showing them how to do that I basically showed them how to match them up and see what's left over so we would say okay red has a 10 we bring it down yellow has a 10 that's equal red has another 10 yellow has another 10 that's equal now let's look at our leftovers we have two yellow uh, two reds we'll bring down two yellows to make it even and that up there we talk about is our difference. That's the difference between these two numbers because right now they're the same. The difference is up here. So we count it. What's the difference? Four. There are four more yellow counters. So this was just a fun and easy activity once they did this. Um, and I actually walked around. I was very impressed with how they did. I would have them put all their counters back in the bag, shake, 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 dump, and play again. So it's easy to go in a center as well.
morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Um, I realized yesterday that it just got really busy. I think the only thing I showed you was my new bulletin board and the math game for comparing sets, which um, is great. And like I said, I will link that down below, but I think that's all I showed you. So today, this morning, I wanted to show you a little bit more about what we're doing, some of the activities we've been up to, and just share a little bit about the life. I did print out these two. Uh, we have 120 chart and I have this, let's see if I can grab it, this how-to anchor chart because we are starting our how-to writing. To, um, we started it yesterday actually. So we took a look at this anchor chart and then we had students get in groups, I'll show you in a second, um, to kind of explore what parts of how-to writing each of those books had. But I'm going to have both of these blown up into a poster so I can put them, um, display them around when we are talking about them. Here's just a closer look at the two anchor charts. This is the how-to writing one. So we said it's a type of writing that teaches readers how to do something. It usually has clear pictures and labels to give more information. It will have some sort of like transition words to guide the reader. Uh, we did talk about too, sometimes it'll say step one, step two. Um, and then it's definitely told in order and follows steps. We talked about that a lot. Um, and then the other one is just my 120 chart. So I'm gonna be replacing that subtraction strategies anchor chart with a big 120 chart. And then the how-to writing anchor chart, I will just put up here to use. So yesterday, after we introduced how-to writing during writing time, um, we talked about the different features it has and we talked about how we've read, we've read all of these books except these two so far. Um, and I had students get in groups of two or three and they had to go through the books with their group and determine if they had all the parts of the anchor chart. So I had the anchor chart big up on the board and they had to go through and then um, I had everybody come back to the rug and each group got up and kind of shared what parts of how to writing their books had and which parts it did not have. Today I printed this out. This is our brainstorming sheet because after we have talked about what is in how to writing, uh, we're going to do some brainstorming today. So they'll watch me model and brainstorm some things I know how to do. And I do split it up into categories. That way we can kind of narrow down some ideas. But this will be our first chance to go over some things that we are experts at. And then tomorrow we will pick one of these topics to create our own how-to book. So I need to go make copies of this. Also, I got this cute sweater from Stitch Fix. It's just like two-toned and I love it. Except I realized, where is it? I have a hole in it up here. So I'm gonna need my mom to sew it because I don't know how. And that's kind of a bummer and I don't even know if it's in a good spot to sew, but we'll find out. I wanted to show you a couple things we did yesterday and then I'll show you um, what we're doing today in both math and reading. So first let me show you phonics for yesterday. In phonics, we've been talking a lot about those silent E words. So we do a quick little sound review. Um, and then these come out, you know, one by one and we are working on some silent E words that have the suffix S. So we'll do the blend first. Grap, if we add the E, it's grape. And then we have grapes. And we talk about how we don't need to um, sound out the S at the end. We actually just want to decode the base word and then the S is just a suffix. So we talk about what each one means. Kites and shapes. And we just talk about um, how it, for these, these are all plural. And then we also talked about the jobs of silent E. So we also know that E makes the G say the soft G sound. And instead of G, it says J. And then we did the same with the C, rice and ice. And then we also added a suffix S here. Um, we did some review of heart words. And then I had students practice decoding some of these uh, sentences that use the heart words and the words we've been working on. Now, yesterday we did another little quick review of the sounds, and then I had students practice coming up and marking up some words. So here we have a bunch of different patterns that we have taught so far this year. So all of these words are decodable. Um, and we just came up, we had some reading detectives and they had to go ahead and mark it up. So if they saw um, a glued sound, they had to put a box around it. Um, you know, every kind of program does a little different. Foundations has their own way of marking up these words. So that's what I had students come up and do. And then they had to, of course, read the word for us and tell us what it meant or use it in a sentence. Then we played mix and match with a bunch of silent E words. Uh, so students had to mix around the room, find their partner. And then we did some word chaining. Um, we did this on the whiteboard. So instead of using our magnet boards, I actually had them write it. Uh, we did about two different rounds of word chains just to see how they would do. 
Today, since it is Thursday, we are actually assessing tomorrow. So there's a bunch I just kind of want to review today. Uh, again, we're going to review those sounds. This one, again, each letter shows one by one. Um, we will do real or nonsense. You'll have to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down for each of these, and then we will reveal if it was correct or incorrect. Um, and then I do have our, set, our silent E sound slides that we will do. Um, so I'm gonna throw these up here. Um, these are in the Literacy Club and they're also uh, on TPT. But for these, they are going to say the name of the picture, rope, and then somebody will come up and move the buttons for each sound they hear. Er, o, p. And as they do this, everyone will be writing the word on their um, whiteboard. And so underneath it, we will write rope. We don't hear that E, but there is a silent E there. Um, so we'll do a bunch of these that students will practice on their whiteboards. And then I will also have them keep out their whiteboard and we will do a, um, a sentence or two. So they'll really practice some dictation today. That's the agenda. And then there should be about five minutes left or so. And I'm going to give this to them to finish during literacy centers, just a little read and draw where they have to read the sentence and then draw what it says here, just to show that they understand what they're reading. In reading today, we're gonna to do Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato, and we're gonna practice retelling the story. Um, I have this in my book bunch unit with a bunch of different sheets that we're gonna do, so we're gonna do a little retelling for that. And then tomorrow, we're gonna to look at the same story. You're gonna read it again and identify causes and effects from the story. So like I said, both of those are in my book bunch. Um, let's talk about math. I wanna show you what we did yesterday because we introduced adding ones to a two digit number. So I think I told you this before, but we finished up our numbers within 40, identifying them, comparing them, ordering them, and understanding the place value of those numbers. Now we're gonna start some adding. Um, of course, without regrouping, we're not there yet. So right now we're just adding ones. So let me show you what we did. All right, let me pull up the slide. So for our warm up, we first just identified this number. So 24, I asked students how they knew it was 24. Uh, we counted 10, 20, we counted on to 24, and then I wrote 24 up there. And then I had plus three. So they had to identify this was three, and then I wanted them to tell me how they got the sum. Um, and I just listened to different student responses. Some students already knew, they were like, hey, I know this is 20, and I know four plus three equals seven, so 27. Others said they started with 24, and then they counted on three more, which were the two basic ways I was going to teach them how to add. And then we did it again, 32 plus four, equals 36, same thing, we talked about how they got it, and I listened to different responses. Then we went into the direct teaching, so I wanted to show students that we can add ones to a two-digit number by counting on. Um, so I picked a number here, I started with like 32, and I wanted to see if we could do 32 plus three by counting on. So I have students put the bigger number in their head, and then they can count on three more, and I also had students see how to do it with a number tape like this, where we start on 32, hop three spaces and circle 35. So they did this a couple different ways. Then I wanted to show students how we can actually use our place value knowledge to do the same thing. Um, and this is again decomposing that number. So 22 plus four, and I showed them, I would just give them an example, but I showed them how we would do this into a number bond where 22 is broken into 20 and two and then if I am just adding, you know, four more or two more or whatever I said, we don't need to even add it to our tens place because we're not adding tens, we're adding ones. And I know two plus four easily is six, so 26. So we talked about that a few times. And then I had them play a fun little activity to practice this. So for the activity, I just opened up a little spinner that looked like this. Um, I just inserted all the numbers. They are all, you know, 20s, 30s, and 40s with no ones place higher than three. Um, and then they got a die. So let me show you. They worked with partners to do this. And they used their little mats back here. This mat. Each pair got one of these mats, and they got a bag of base 10 cubes. And what they would do is I would call somebody up to go ahead and spin that wheel and then they would tell the class what number they landed on. And let's say they landed on 21, player one or one of the players would go ahead and build 21 here on the mat. So they would add the two tens and the one one and they would write 21. Then they would go ahead and roll a die. Um, and so this is the other player, the other player would roll the die and add that many ones here 
and then finish the equation. So each time they were adding ones, I was able to walk around, see if they could write the equation, see if they could accurately add it up. And we also talked about how when we are doing this, we're never touching the tens place. Right now, we are only touching the ones. We have to add it here first. And then for the independent practice at the end, I had a little solve the room where all the equations, again, were, you know, 20, 30s, and 40s, and they were just adding ones to it, and they could do it with whatever strategy they needed, um, but they could go ahead and solve that and pass it in for independent practice. Today, we're doing something very similar. Let me pull up the slides for that. Okay, so today for math, again, something very similar. They're going to identify what number this is first. And then instead of having ones, I'm just gonna have the number. So 24 plus five, how can we solve that? And again, knowing how they did it yesterday, I'm really looking for them to decompose into tens and ones and then go ahead and do that. Then we have a couple more of these. So we have 32 plus six and 26 plus four. So for this one, this is like an extension one. I just like a challenge one because obviously the six and the four is going to make a new 10. So the other two, that's why I included two that we reviewed yesterday, um, like these ones. And then this is a challenge one for some of my higher learners just to talk about what's going to happen down the road. So then we're gonna do the same thing where we're going to talk about adding tens to a two digit number, um, except in this case, when we're talking about tens, I show a grid because we're gonna talk about how we go down when we count by tens on a 120 chart or a hundreds chart. Um, and then of course, we're going to do the same thing where we use our place value knowledge to add 10. So if I am adding a multiple of 10, 10, 20, 30, I don't need to touch the ones. I don't need to put all the little ones here. I can just grab a rod. And we're gonna do a similar activity to yesterday where we have our spinner. So same numbers back here. We'll use the same materials here where they will spin it and build that first number. Let's say it's 33, 33, the first person to write 33. And then I will just pick a um, multiple of 10. So I'm gonna say add 50. And then they have to add 50 here and they'll get 88. Or I'll say add 10, add 20. I might not start with 50. Um, and then again, they'll just write the equation at the top and we'll talk about how we are only adding tens. And then for independent practice, I don't remember exactly where this is from, but we have different numbers here and then they're just adding multiples of 10 that they will go ahead and solve. Let's see, for our special today, we have art. In writing, we've been doing our writing warm-ups, which we always start with. Um, this one, we moved on from opinion, so we are turning sentences into super sentences. I let students know by this time in first grade, we are ready to write a super sentence. So Sam went to the park and we asked ourselves the question words, who, what, where, when, why, and how, and we tried to add something here. So we did this one the other day, kids said, Sam went to the park to walk his dog, or Sam went to the park with his friends. Uh, Sam went to the park in the morning. And then I have a student come up and write it up here and we always check for cups. I mentioned this before, but we used to do this just whole group and kind of talk about it, say the sentence out loud, write it down. Now I've been having students come with their whiteboards and markers from the back. They come right to the rug and they just start writing it right away once I put it up there. And then our how-to writing, we are following along with my how-to writing unit from the SJT Writing Club. So our goal is we are going to identify things that we know how to do. And what's awesome is one of my colleagues um, actually went ahead and made slides to go along with my uh, units because we always teach with slides. So we have let's learn. Yesterday we talked about, you know, what parts of a how-to writing piece looks like. And today we're going to brainstorm some ideas to make our own how-to books. So we'll start with brainstorming. Um, and then I say, you know, watch me. Here's some things I know how to do at home. I know how to wash dishes. I could teach somebody else how to do it. Fold laundry, cook. I know how to watch TV. I know how to clean up the floor. I know how to take a good nap. And I'll give some little examples of how I might teach somebody to do that just using a few steps. And then this is the brainstorming sheet that students are going to do, but we're gonna do a few together just to give some examples of things that students might know how to do in kind of each category play with toys, watch a movie, make my bed. Those are things we can do at home. Swing, play soccer, plant a flower, goes outside. So we'll kind of talk about each one and think about what category they might go in before I have students go off and write their own. And this is where it will be their turn. So now you'll need to brainstorm some ideas of things you are experts at. And then of course, always before I have them go off to their seat, they need to think of one category and they need to think of one thing in their head to share with the partner. 
before they head back and start writing. So then they will go off and they will do this on their own. Um, and then when their brainstorming sheet is done, they will put it in their writing folder. And then just like a bunch of my other writing units, we will pick one of those topics. We will go ahead and um, plan out our steps that we're going to write. We usually do three or four steps for this how-to writing. We'll make sure that we add in those transition words to guide the reader. And then we will stretch that plan across the pages. So just like in personal narratives, just like in opinion writing, I will have a booklet for them. And then each page will have its own little step one, step two, step three, step four. Um, that they will go ahead and write and we'll make sure they include those words. They'll have pictures with labels and that's kind of the, the process that will go along, but I will make sure that I kind of share it with you over these next few weeks. This will really only be like a two week unit, so it shouldn't take too long. All right, I am going to finish up a few things around here before the kids get in. And as always, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. Um, I do want to share, don't forget that I am presenting at the Educator Summit this summer. I'm doing a math presentation, and if you use the code SUSAN when you check out, you actually get $10 off your ticket price. It's a virtual conference, so you don't have to go anywhere, and you can watch it from home. But I will link that down in the description in case you want to check it out. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.